this is a beautiful slide. This is a beautiful photograph. We do not want this. We want this. <laughs>so this is pretty cool so you can see the moon and right next to moon there is Jupiter and then you go a little bit lower and you can see Venus that's Venus right there and then we can go all the way to the other side we should be able to see a red dot that red dot is Mars and if we go back a little bit here, that, that faint dot right in the middle of the screen right now. Trying to pull focus, there we go. That dot is Saturn. And what I, what I really love about that is that um, it kind of shows that all of our planets are sitting on the same plane. Right, and that that's the plane that we call the ecliptic. I think I'm saying that right. But yeah, I'm currently on my way to physics in the pub, and I'm in just the most gorgeous place in Sydney. I love, I love here. I love the city. Just look at it. Two hours later. Peter Lebedev. Um, before I start, um, I just want to thank Phil for organizing such an amazing event. There's so much work that goes on behind the scenes, and I'm sure we'll thank him again at the end of the night, but just in case we get too drunk and forget, <laughs> let's, ju let's just do this now. Uh, clicker! So hi, I'm Peter. I'm from the University of Sydney, and uh, I really like comic sounds. And I really like making science presentations. So let's go. Let's make this as awkward as physically possible. So here is my outline. Because the outline is the most important part of a science communication talk. And uh, no. So yeah, so there's, the, there's two parts to a science communication talk. There's the actual presentation, and then there's the content. So I'm just gonna cover how to present well first. Slides. Do not waste your time making beautiful slides, because you could have been spending that time doing research, which is real physics, and that is what we care about. We just want all of our research to be confined to the smallest group of people and then assume that everyone else is an idiot. Um, so yeah, anyone that is smart enough to understand what you're saying is smart enough to be able to follow along really difficult equations with no explanations at all. Uh, wall of text, not only fine, but deeply encouraged. And death by PowerPoint is my favorite kind of death. This is a beautiful slide. This is a beautiful photograph. We do not want this. We want this. <laughs> this is a beautiful photo Take it. sorry, it's an awful photo. God, it's so, not enough equations. It's a, it's a photo taken by the Cassini spacecraft of Enceladus. We don't want this, we want this. <laughs> Um, all of these like terrible slides I actually got uh, from, it's from the NSA leaks that happened. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, so we want this. We don't want this. We don't want a photo of Enceladus where, you know, there might, there's a, a crust, an uh, icy crust that is five kilometers thick and underneath there is a liquid ocean and in that ocean uh, there could be life because there's also the hydrothermal activity due to the tidal forces. We don't want this and we don't want to tell people about that because that's too interesting. We want this. <laughs> we don't want this which is Europa which has you know also a possibility for life there. We want <laughs> this executive summary. Oh my god, uh, we want also to accidentally just screw up your slides uh, and awkwardly click for... Cool. So, how to present. Just, excuse me. 
don't try to be engaging. Science is engaging enough, so this means you don't have to practice your talk. In fact, what you can do is give your public presentation talk in a monotone voice while reading off the projector. This is known by all as the best way to retain the audience's attention and totally does not put them to sleep and make them think that science is a really, really boring subject. In fact, the Cambridge Handbook of Multimedia Learning, Mayor at all 2005, specifically states that students learn better from words. <laughs> well played. <laughs> okay. Another thing that we should talk about is uh, there's this kind of uh, meme, which I really don't like. People say, know your audience. Because like, what is there to know? All audiences are exactly the same, and they're interested in exactly the same things that I am. And really, like, science is already interesting to the people who are interested, and the people who aren't interested are idiots. And we really, there's no point bringing them on board the ship. Also, we all know that five-year-old kids love jargon because I was a five-year-old kid and I love jargon, so this, this, this totally parses. Cool. Storytelling. No. Don't do it. It's a trap. I'm not gonna read all of that. It's, yeah, more wall of text. Thank you so much. All those in favor of Peter getting his PhD! The trick is, Peter, get your examiners drunk. <laughs> All right.